What's up guys, I'm Jeff, and today we're talking about the Frequent Flyer from Mag Bay Lures. Now, there's been a lot of questions about this lure. What is it? How do you fish it? How is it different from a regular yummy flyer? And uh, what, what, what am I supposed to do with it? Well, first and foremost, the traditional yummy flyer can only be used on a kite. It's meant to be dragged around at, you know, between four and 10 knots, and really try and track down the area of where you're gonna find bigger tunas. And it's not really effective once you find them, other than just driving around the same area and burning a lot of gas. So that's when people started switching to fishing dead flying fish. Now, although it's a really effective method, no doubt it works, uh, it's, not, it's not for everybody. And what I mean for that is that the average guy doesn't wanna bring a bunch of dead frozen flying fish on their two or three day trip on a sport boat. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. And that's really where the freaking flyer was born. We wanted to give guys an economical way to still fly or drift a flying fish bait without having the mess, the hassle of bringing helium, a kite, or additional rigging for their bait. So that's really how this lure came, came into play. Now we showed you guys the backpack rig last year, how a really effective way of putting foam on the backside of a dead flying fish and drifting on the opposite side of the boat from the kite is a really effective way of having more baits in the water, which means catching more fish. Now, we've done the same thing. We've basically taken that idea and created a lure. Now, as far as the construction of the lure, it's still a silicon body, just as your regular yummy flyer would, but it's got a foam core. And what this foam core does is it allows it to float. Now, because of the silicone body, it still has a lot of weight to it. It's almost the exact same weight as a dead flying fish. So. If you want to put this on a kite instead of fishing the dead flying fish bait, you can certainly do that. If you just want to float it out on the opposite side of the boat, it'll float and do that without a kite. That's the whole reason why, why we made it. Now, the construction of it, obviously we have the foam core, silicon body, and what we actually have is a really durable wing set. Now, I show you this because the idea for the wings is to be out. But when this fish gets attacked by a big tuna, you want these things to wrap up, and no matter which direction, crumple up so that way you can get the hooks in the mouth of the tuna. Now these are just fixed. You have a lot of a lot of missed hits on the fish. You know, these tuna come up, they come up super fast. They're just looking at that wing set from the bottom and they're gonna hit these things really hard. And if these wings are too stiff, it's just gonna fly and bounce off. So that's not what we want. What we wanted was for these wings to collapse and still be durable. Um, we do have a plastic rod inside of them, which makes them stay a little bit more flat, so to speak, to keep them out and upright. Um, if for some reason they lose shape, they are replaceable. We sell them on our website as well. Um, but overall, I mean, it's a really, really durable piece of plastic, so you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. Now, when it comes to fishing them, two different ways to, to, to fish these, okay? The first is just your standard drift. This is something that you're going to be doing if you're on a sport boat. Now, when I say a standard drift, the ideal conditions is that the boat's going to be set up drifting uh, you know, with the stern kind of on an angle sideways. And what you want to do is you want to toss this thing off the front of the boat. And the reason why I say the front is that as the boat's drifting, it's got currents that, that kind of turn up and down. And if you don't toss it off the front of the boat, this thing is going to get stuck following the shadow of the boat and it's not going to be able to get away from the boat. So what you want to do, toss out the front. And ideally you want to have some wind, like probably 10 knots or more, right? The more wind, the better. The help get this thing away from the boat a lot faster, okay? As this thing's out there drifting further and further and further out, just keep it in free spool and get it to your desired distance. You don't need to sit there and watch the bait. You don't need to have an indicator on it, okay? You've got tension on the line because you're not flying this up to a kite and back down. There's nothing to really reel up. So you're fishing this thing basically in free spool until you get to your desired distance, so to speak, okay? Now, when I see your desired distance, obviously away from the boat, but I don't wanna see more than half of my spool out. If there's more than half of my spool, if this thing gets bit and takes off, as I'm applying drag, I'm not gonna have any line left to put on this fish to let it run. So, no more than half of your spool. Typically, I'm fishing this thing with at least 100 pound, uh, set up at, at the bare minimum, typically bigger if there's bigger fish. Now, the great thing about fishing one of these lures is that you can fish more than one. If you're on a, a private boat, you can fish two or three of these along the windward side of your boat and then fish your kite on the opposite side, downwind. More baits in the water, better chance of getting bit. That's the whole idea behind it. 
Now here's an example of an ideal setup. We got fish under the boat on the downwind side of the boat. We got the kite up with the bait on hanging. And then now with a frequent flyer, you can fish baits upwind, drifting them on the other side of the boat. And this way you get more baits in the water. Now, when it comes to rigging it, it's really simple. And let me show you. Now, when you purchase it from us, they do come pre-rigged. But after you catch a fish or two, you definitely want to change out your leader and make sure you have a nice, strong, unabrased connection. So go ahead and feed the leader through the nose of the lure and slide it through. And then get your hooks lined up here. And there's a little trick to setting in the, the first hook. There's a, there's, there is a placeholder in the foam core. So in order to fit that in there, you kind of need to slide it in at a 90 degree angle. And once you got it in there, just give it a little twist. And it'll pop right in place. And then uh, obviously your treble hook behind that you're going to secure with some rubber bands. Now, we can't slide a complete hooked leader through. So what we do supply is chafing springs and a crimp. And once you get it through there, you can create your loop through your crimp. Pull it tight. You can burn the ends also if you want to. Not necessary. And then just crimp it tight. Now you are ready to go. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the lure or how to set it up or fish it, please drop in the comments. We'll be more than happy to help you. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out our online store. Thanks so much.